Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the, well, my yep. table's not round. My, my, my table, table is a rectangle. My table is a big oval. Like, I've got an ellipse. This is my dining room table that I'm seated at in my own home. I'm in a corner of my living room at a table that I actually, I actually got upset with my wife about buying this table uh, because she got like a nice table that you have to like screw together in order to as opposed was, to what? Well, like a, a table folding you table. W- okay. It was a table that she got for a party that has since been canceled because of the virus. Yes, and my my son's sixteenth birthday, and because she can't just have like a folding table like everyone else, she's got to have a pretty wooden table that you have to put together. I was like, why, why do we have this? I don't, we have to put it together. But now I am so thankful to my beautiful wife and my smart wife, uh, my wife who has so much foresight, she, She's not, Jesse. She's not watching. She's, she's probably well, not no, she's listening. Up, she, well, she's taking a shower right now, if, you, if, oh, if, she, I, must be, if I must be honest about this. Yeah, right before, you must be honest. Because right before we started recording, uh, I said, okay, guys, I'm starting to record, and no one responded. She said, well, I'm taking a shower, and then my, uh, my fifth grade son, it just continued to, he's talking to his classmates. He's learning. They're learning. He's doing school. We are in a totally, I mean, this is the first thing that has been completely altered because of the virus for, for us in terms of content. This is our. This is the first ever ear biscuits that we are performing remotely, separate from performing. each other. Performing. I don't consider. <laughs> I, that's an interesting. I, I feel like I'm saying weird you words because I'm not. I'm not in my normal environment. I would have just said doing. This is the well, first like, ear biscuit that we're doing. I don't mean performing in like a like a performance sense, like in an entertainment sense. Like I mean performing in like a surgical sense. Because I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a bit stressed out because I mean we've got it's just me doing everything on my end. I don't know if you've got assistance. I don't think you do. No, if you I do, don't. I'm gonna I, be angry. I tried to I tried to get my children to help, and they um, they did not respond. Uh, well, yeah, so so yeah, I'm of, I'm performing a freaking technical feat here that you know I'm freaking rusty. Even I mean, thinking as we've been doing the vlogs, I at least know how to work our camera. And now it's like I had to dust off my garage band to figure out how to record myself. And then we got well, this and just I got so an iPad know, video chatting with you. Yeah, like just to give you an idea of how this is set up, if you're that kind of person who's interested. Well, first of all, let me just say that something will go wrong with this recording. I mean, it, it is just, it is right. destined, there's destined, destined to be an error somewhere in the process. And you're probably going to be somewhat frustrated. Hopefully not. But I'm pretty shocked. So, we're, th- we're three minutes in and nothing's gone wrong except for my use of the word performance. And I also thought that this would be a simpler uh, process to set up. Yeah, I, but I was like, oh, you know, okay, because we're going to do this thing where we're going to do like a split screen. Uh, we'll talk about how we're trying to figure out the same kind of deal for GMM. But essentially, we've got the camera that we normally record the vlogs with recording video. We've got uh, audio going directly into a computer. We both have these blue Yeti mics. This one I've had forever. Link had to get that one. Uh, so this is like one of our first mics that we ever bought uh, as a as a company. And yeah, uh, I actually saw a clip of when we went back to Harnett Central. When we went back to our high school. We shot. I think we shot a week's worth of episodes from um, Miss. I can't remember whose room. Miss Sewell's room. Our old French class. And yeah, um, yeah you, you, we had that microphone. So, and man. so th- those mics are going directly into our laptops, which are recording the audio on GarageBand. But then in order to be able to communicate with each other at the same time, we are on a Google chat that's on an iPad that we are looking at. So I'm now looking at Link, who's looking at me. And uh, if other mythical team know, members man. want to log into the chat, they can watch this as it's happening. But uh, but yeah, I mean, we here's what we want to do today. We want to process, we want to bring you up to speed on what our process has been um, as we've settled into um, staying at home and coming to grips with what this virus means for us 
and what it means for our 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 worlds and also the world in general. So th- this is, you know, I just want to pro- I want to process that with my friend here on the. <laughs> I mean, there's also this thing that's like getting past the fact that like, hey, we're communicating on screens. This is the new normal. A lot of communicating on screens. We'll get into all that, but well, because I will say, uh, I, again, we're recording this a few days before um, the audio goes live, but a week and a half or so before, almost two weeks before it would go live video on YouTube. So a lot may have changed by then, uh, but currently where we're at in California, we are under a stay-at-home order. So it is technically illegal at this point for us to conduct our business in the way that we typically would, i.e. going into the studio. Um, now, I think and we want to protect ourselves. We want to we want to protect other people. We want to we want to do the right thing. So, uh, yeah, we're not doing it just we're trying because to figure that out. We're not not doing it just because it's illegal. Uh, we actually, uh, and it's interesting at this point in the conversation nationwide. Uh, it's there's very different perspectives. There's people who are like, oh, this is a complete overreaction, and there are people who are like. Uh, no, we need to be listening to what the medical experts are telling us. And we're on team medical expert. Uh, we're not medical experts, but we're on team. We believe the medical experts, uh, the consensus of the medical experts being that we need to stay at home, social distance, and kind of flatten the curve. So this is our effort to flatten the curve. Um, and so we're going to continue to bring you what we can bring you it's just going to be in a slightly flattened the curve manner yeah um i i would i just want i want to hear the story that i've heard like third hand i want to hear it from your perspective because you haven't told me um christy was talking to jesse and i caught bits and pieces of she was she was shocked by by someone outside of her window and I, I just didn't hear the full story. I, I want to hear that from you right now. Uh, well, yeah. So our wives were on a uh, group video chat with their, their close group of female friends. Which they, I don't think they had ever done that. I, they're on, they've been on WeChat for years. That's the thing that they would talk to each other and give themselves cute little chat group names or whatnot. They were well ahead of the curve of us finally doing that with our friends, but... And they never did video chats. So it's like, again, it's it's just one example, like I said, of 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 a new normal. Getting used to this video chat, group chat stuff. But anyway, go ahead. But one of the things that um, has been an unfortunate, just coincidence, is that it's been raining like crazy in California. I mean, I yeah, know. we got to we got to deal with this virus. We got to stay at home, but that doesn't mean you got to stay in your house. In fact. We've been trying to take advantage of being together as a family and hiking and walking. Barbara's gotten more walks, and she's like, "What? What are we doing? What is this?" And by the way, um, park park trails are now closed as of yesterday. You can't go on a trail. Well, I didn't tell you this, but on Saturday, and let me tell you, this is why they're closed mm-hmm. because on Saturday, uh, Jesse and I were like, "Hey, let's go up to the local trail head yeah. to kind of get up in." Uh, in, in there, and as soon as get, we pull get into some trailhead, the place, <laughs> as soon as we pull into the place, the cars are parked on the street. So you know that all the parking lots are overflowed, and they're not. And these trails are these trails are not wide. They're, they're so narrow. We we drove right through and drove right out because I was like, hey, boys and girls, that's not social distancing. I mean, just because no. you're outside doesn't mean the virus isn't like I'm outside. And so therefore I can't move. If, if somebody f- coughs on you or breathes on you on you're on the trail and you like you're 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 heaving huffing and puffing. <laughs> he in and hu- he in and hoving? I said heaving and huffing, huffing, <laughs> heaving and huffing. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I before the governor put in the stay at home provision, we had already decided that we were going to, you know, both of our families, we had decided we were going to hunker down in our own homes and um, um, send our employees home and everything. But 
it was the first day that it hadn't rained. And again, it was before that ordinance was in place. And I said, well, we can, we can just go on some trails. And then I, we were on the trail and there was a, about as many people as normal. But then, yeah, the, the huffing and puffing. Like people would come down the trail and I would stand to the side and face away. And, but I was self-conscious because, again, this is pretty early. A lot of people, I think, were just on the trail because it's part of their normal lives just to go on this trail and like run up and down it or take their dog or if they're an old person with the two sticks. Lots of those old people with two sticks were still out there at that point. Yeah. And so I would like act, instead of just like, <gasps> just like, what's it called when you pull back and you're... That's a heave. Whatever. Okay. But that's the heave of the heave and huff. Now I think that's acceptable. Of course, you can't go on trails. But then I would like, I would turn and I would act like I was taking in the view. You know, like, it's beautiful out here. But just to like turn away from people who are huffing and puffing and going I, by Well, me. what I've been doing as a, I haven't been on a trail yet, uh, and apparently I'm not ever going to be again. <laughs> well, not anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> Don't be so bleak, we've been, man. When we, we've been walking around the neighborhood and we've seen people coming, you know me, I can hold my breath for a long time. So when they get about 25, 30 steps away, I just hold my breath and then I go by and then I release. You start turning blue? If they, what if they stop and talk to you? You're like, Whoop. I just give a head nod. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, I can, talk and, I can talk and not breathe in. Yep. How you doing? I haven't taken a breath yet. Yep, I'm still breathing out. As long oh, as the air is going out. You know what? I can breathe and I cannot you don't breathe, have to breathe and talk, talk too. I'm not. I'm not. You actually don't even have to change the way that you talk. <laughs> I don't know why we're doing that. No, hold on. Take a deep breath, and then if I just talk, no, no, I'm breathing out. You got to breathe out to talk. But talking is breathing out. Why? Well, you let you do this. <laughs> you let you talk like this. No, you don't want to do that because then you're sucking in other people's virus. Yeah, I'm just using that as an example. But if um, you just. Yeah, but you can't breathe back in, so it's just breathing out, but you never take a breath back in. So whenever you stop talking, you're holding your breath again, and that is not absolutely normal. Right. Um, anyway. But where I was going with that was I haven't had an opportunity to go outside very much uh, because it's been raining so much. Yeah. Uh, I think this is our last week of crazy rain, and then it's going to get back to more like Southern California, but... Uh, there was a moment of sunshine. It wasn't very warm. I mean, for California, it was like 55 degrees, which we were still like, oh, that's a jacket. It's like um, a blizzard to me. But because the sun came out, uh, I went outside and actually took my shirt off, got down just to my pants, and took my meditation cushion out there and started doing some yoga, I did some meditation. I mean, I just became like an amateur guru out there on my basketball area out here. And, That's, uh, amateur guru is not a thing. Those, are, <laughs> those, are, those, like, can't, those words cancel each other out. That's wannabe I said, guru, amateur. I think is wannabe guru. Sure. No, I don't, I don't think you're wannabe guru. And I think at this point, just sidebar, my air conditioner heater... Came on. It's, there's going to be a lot of noise in this in this podcast. Just get over it. Just, no one uh, cares. I'm not going to apologize every, for it again. Everybody was over it. Um, so I uh, I was out there. First of all, I was just enjoying myself, just beyond words. Hmm. And uh, you know, I've gotten really flexible. Have you seen how flexible I am now? No. Uh, I know I've been moving around like a real old man in all our vlogs because it's because of my knee. But my knee is basically healed. I mean, it took almost two months for my knee to get healed. So I'm kind of back to my spry self now. Okay, And yeah. um, Just in time to do nothing. Yeah, exactly. Just in time to stay at home. <laughs> but I was doing all kinds of... I, got, I was going on the internet, looking at moves, doing them. But then I just started to kind of walk around out there and just, you know, just take in the sun. And then I realized that, oh... I just walked up to the window to the guest uh, bedroom, which is where Jessie is currently on her ladies' chat. <laughs> ah. So what was she? She hasn't told me about this, by the way. 
she told Christy that some she saw someone walk by and she thought it was a shirtless vagrant. Like her her emotional and knee jerk reaction <laughs> was fear. Yeah. She was deeply afraid because her husband walked past the window. And then it took her a couple of beats and she was like, wait, that was my husband. What what have you done, man? I mean, like you Well, you, I will you're, say you're gallivanting around your house and you're you're putting your own family in fear. Well, the other this is, day this means I was actually, something. The other day I was walking through the neighborhood just by myself. Shirtless? And uh no, I, I was but I mean I didn't look well kept. No, because no, I, you don't. Right. And I had on like I had on a hoodie and then like some unmatching sweatpants, <laughs> um, and like uh, hiking shoes. Okay, because I because because it was the day we thought we were going to go to the uh, to the trail. Yeah, and I know what my hair. I, I listen. I I've I've seen the comments. I, I I've seen all the people requesting beard or hair trims. At this point, it's definitely not going to happen. It's like I feel like I was—I've been preparing for this moment all my life to look like this during this pandemic. You were ahead of the curve, uh, but I was walking through the neighborhood and I started realizing that um, it could easily be perceived that a homeless man has left some urban area and has right. now up into the neighborhoods, right. looking Is for a place to bed down. His territory has expanded. And I got a little paranoid. And um, Oh, you got paranoid. And then all of a sudden, like at the height of my paranoia, I hear whoop, whoop, like a, you know, like when the cops do that thing where they oh, hit, yeah. they make Chirp. that little noise. The co- they chirp a cop it up. chirped you? I turn around and there's a cop like sp- flying towards me. What? With his, with his lights on and the siren. <laughs> and now he, he's chirping. He's whoop, whoop. He's like, he's like almost like a record scratch with a chirp. And I'm like, somebody has called and said that there's a vagrant walking through the neighborhood. <laughs> it and was this, probably and, your wife. And the cop is is coming after me. Yeah. But then he did just get, goes did right you get down? Past uh, me. Uh, you should have just got right down, put your hand behind you. But I was thinking something. about like what I was going to say. I was like, no, no, I live here. <laughs> it's like, and I was realizing that no matter what I said, everything was going to sound made up. I haven't been cutting my hair because of therapy. It's a long story. Uh, I was actually thinking about this today, that even if I made a decision to trim, I, I'm not going to cut my own hair at this point. Yeah, we, well, you could. I'm not saying you could. I'm not saying you couldn't. I'm saying but you I should. Haven't, but I, but just, to, just you know, to check in on that, I don't feel like I've, I don't feel like I've learned my lesson yet. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, well, I think a lot. To that yeah, air biscuit, I, I respect, I, there's a reason I, I I'm going that. out. I don't think I've, I don't think I've learned what I need to learn yet. I've learned that people, a lot of people, have. I learned that it's polarizing. That's what I've learned. I, I, well, I think you also have learned to like keep a shirt on whenever possible. Stay off yeah. the streets. Um, try to get your sweatsuit to mat, match if you're going out in public. Just d- do a little something. Do a little something for yourself. You know, we got. Okay. I actually have some thoughts about. Self care in this environment. Uh, I'll get to a little bit later, but for right now, let's plug the store. Okay, mythical dot com. Yeah, Go thankfully there. we've still We're got still one. selling stuff. <laughs> um, we just released a new "I Am a Mythical Beast" T. So check that out. Yeah, There's also and actually. Yeah, we're, we're the proceeds. A portion of the proceeds from the the, yes. the sale of the Be Your Mythical Best in 3D T uh, are going to Feeding America, a nationwide network of 200 food banks working to ensure our most vulnerable populations continue to have access to food. Students who are out of school, the elderly, individuals whose jobs are impacted, and low income families. The Feeding America Food Bank Network is committed to serving communities and people facing hunger in America during the COVID-19 pandemic. Find out what they are doing and how you can help at feedingamerica.org. Did you memorize all that? That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't reading. That was really great. I've had a, I've had a lot of time. <laughs> a lot of t- you're devoting all of this extra time to like memorization. Right. 
I mean, that is an idea. If you got, you know, there, there, there's time. We can, we can invest in ourselves a little bit. Um, rep your boys. Help a good cause. Be your mythical best by wearing the mythical best tee. It's also the feel good stuff. I mean, everybody wants to feel good in this time. We got, we're selling some stuff at mythical.com to help you feel good physically in your body. Mythical.com. <laughs> <laughs> I always dot want to say mythical dot store. It three direct, but mythical dot com. I just really like to process what's happened over the last few weeks. Just like how, how what, what have, I'm curious what your experience has been, and I just figured we could share our experiences because it's it, it's it's just been so surreal. There's so many times when I'm like, this is I'm it's it's like a movie, you know? It's like th- this this doesn't really happen. Um, I've noticed that that thought has started to happen less and less, but for the, for the first week and a half or so, like every night when I'd lay down in the bed, it would just like I'd take a breath. That would be the main thing that I would feel. It's like, is this real? You know, it's just, it, it, you, we were getting pummeled with news. Every few minutes was something that was changing. Every, everyone in every sector of society was just scrambling to figure out what to do and having uh, and the entire spectrum of reactions. Um, I think the one moment that will stick with me is, let's see, it was a couple of weeks ago before things got really stringent here. Again, we, we, we were trying to be as safe as possible and we were preparing to send employees home this is Wednesday a couple of weeks ago, and then just getting them prepared, like, hey, Friday, get your stuff, don't come in. And then I think the announcement went out officially that Sunday. So I'm not saying, hey, we were ahead of the curve, but I mean, we were, we were, we were sending people home, we were starting to process, but I had not watched the news. I had read the news, and you know, I'd read like the, the bites of news, but we, we were in a very vis- busy time. We were actually recording a lot of GMM, and, it, and thank goodness we recorded as much as we were able to record to then have a, a p- fully produced set-based episodes that we could stretch out. But I had not consumed live television news because it's just not, it's not a part of my life anymore. You know, I, I just don't like the bickering. I don't, I don't, it's, it's nothing but stress and it just ticks me off. But I was like, hey, we got it. We got to do this. So I turned it on. I think this was like um, Wednesday or Thursday night. Hold on one second. Is the laundry room door closed? Yeah, it's closed. Oh, it didn't get any quieter. It's okay. Go ahead, Link. It's fine. I, for what it's worth, I can't hear you your laundry. You can't hear it because you're listening to a video chat, which is not going right. to get it. But, but that I guarantee you it's okay. in this. We shouldn't have started running the washing machine, but it's fine. And by know, we, you mean... I mean, my beautiful wife. Oh, gosh. <laughs> go, go, you finish, you're getting ready. What did she just say about your beautiful wife? Nothing. Okay. Yeah, you don't watch news. But and I, I knew, watched the news I, I knew that night. about you. <laughs> um, I've known that about you for many years when I, we would get to work and I'd be like, so, uh, did you hear about so-and-so? But that you actually, know what? I changed that. That recently did change because you got no, like No, not app. recently. Over the past over the past year, I every day I will read well, the I, the headlines on my phone. I will read the headlines. When you've been friends but with I'm somebody, not turn on hold the on, television. Hold on. When you've been friends with somebody for over thirty five years, recently is in the past year. Just so you, okay. Just, well, just, I mean, just that's so not what recently know. sounds like to everybody else. Just so you know. So I turned on the news, and it was, it was, it's a different experience watching television news than reading about it, and it. It really, th- that's when it really hit me. I mean, the newscaster looked straight down the lens and said, we need to come to grips with this. You need to come to grips with this. This is the new normal for the foreseeable future. If you, We're used to getting what we want, when we want it, and that's not going to be the case. Jay, chill out. I think she's getting worked up because she thinks I'm getting worked up because I'm channeling my inner newscaster. What are you? What are you barking at? 
Do you hear Rhett's laundry? It's okay. And I gathered the kids around, and because Chrissy and I were watching it, and I said, you know what, kids, this is, I just want you to know this is a huge deal. Um, we're we're going to be as safe as possible. I, tried, I gave them reassurance, but then I also said, this is something that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Hey, am I going to have to send you away? And you know what I mean by that. I just mean go in another room and sit on another <laughs> comfy couch. <laughs> um, the last time I remember hanging on the words of a newscaster was 9-11. And I know that, I think it was uh, the governor of New York. I, it may have been thrown, out, thrown around by a bunch of people that like, this is this, is this generation's 9-11. In, in the sense that, my experience, the, 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 all of the questions, all of the, the fear that came up, all of the just not knowing how to process it and looking for someone or the, the people who can help make sense of it to give reassurance that there's a plan, that, there's, that we're going to be okay. And I, I distinctly remember that morning on 9-11 just hanging on every word of the newscasters and everyone was trying to figure it out and it, on live television, you know? Mm-hmm. And again, this was, much, this was more drawn out than that and it, it, it's different in a bunch of ways, but there was a, a kindred experience that then I, I, I tried to convey to the kids, but I, I just ended up saying... You're going to remember this the rest of your lives, um, ha- having to having to hunker down in our homes, and um, you know I didn't make it I didn't make it that bleak and doom and gloom as as scared as I was. I didn't want to I didn't want to dump all of that on them, so I didn't do it. But yeah, well, you know, the interesting thing, you know, I, I would say two things, kind of where I I, I come from a, a slightly different place. With this, I mean, one, um, my talk about the, you know, apocalypse uh-huh. is I, I I I often talk about it in, um, you know, I'm joking, I'm going into character, and I'm just kind of BSing, but that comes from a place of actual concern that, you know. All, all our systems are so fragile. We're seeing that right now. We're seeing that um, th- we were a lot more vulnerable in a lot more ways than anybody. Well, I'm going to say than anybody knew, but actually there's a lot of people who've been saying for years, you know, the, again, I think, um, I think people who aren't in America might be a little bit perplexed as to what they hear coming out of the U.S. and they see on Twitter and they see on the news, it's like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. why is there this very bifurcated reaction to what's what's happening? And why does it seem like people of a particular political persuasion seem to think a certain way about a virus? I think that's probably rather perplexing to people from other places in the world. Um, And there's, there's a lot of reasons that go behind that. But I think that, interestingly, we have seen a lot of people saying, hey, guys, listen, this is going to happen. You see a lot of people saying, like, nobody could have been prepared for this. Well, actually, there's like there's some excellent books that have been written about this that basically said that this was completely and totally inevitable, unavoidable, predictable. They've been telling us for years that uh, given how global our society is now and how quickly people travel— and how easy it is for a, you know, a virus to jump from an animal to a person, and there be no no immunity. Anyway, we, we kind of knew that this was going to happen, and so I think I kind of had in the in the many different in in time scenarios that when you watch like Doomsday Preppers and that kind of thing. And again, I don't think that we're we're not in an apocalyptic situation by any means. This is not the end of culture or humanity or anything. This is just a difficult thing that is affecting everybody and that we have to kind of come together and overcome and we will overcome it. It's just a matter of how long will it take. 
but but you're the but you're the type of person that was familiar with th- the world of the world going into crisis because you ha- you have an interest in it because there's something because of your personality type there's something within you that that made you read about it but then there's a second step it's like when you would read about these things you would process them in a way that led to personal application like in i think it was the gmm episode where you went through all the all the apocalypse bunker stuff that you had bought and you took me through it and then you you also bought stuff for me right and we made it which hopefully you still have i still have i haven't had to dig into it yet but i feel better knowing i have it so thank you once again but yeah, I think we represent two different personality types that like, and I, and I think mine's a little bit different. And but go ahead. Well, th- so yeah, this was something that wasn't a surprise to me, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but the second thing was, um, we have the news on all the time. Like it is a, it's kind of like a, you know, we've got the news on in the house like at night a couple three times a, times a week i think our kids our kids get very tired of hearing me and jesse talk about the news whereas with lando when i sat him down and we were watching the news that night it was the first time we had ever watched the news as a family and he was the newscaster was interviewing somebody and they were getting into it you know like they do it was just like they were trying to cut each other off, and one guy wanted to answer his say what he wanted to say instead of the qu- answer the question. And Lando turned to me and he said, "Are they angry with each other? Are they are they fighting?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's that's what happens on the news," it, which was news to him. And it it again, it's like that's not my vibe, man. It's just like. Well, I, I got to watch the Australian news, but I think that's one of the interesting elements of this thing is that um you know, because the because the whole world of news, both uh online, print, and cable news, everything is driven by ad revenue, right? And so for years we've gotten into this place where it seems like every time you come back from a break on a on a cable news program, breaking news Right. And I think when mm. things actually become breaking news like they have right now, uh, when people actually need to know, like it's a, a potential life or death situation, whether or not they get this information. I think people have maybe become a little bit numb to like, oh, yeah, you guys are panicking about something. I think that's one of the things that's happened in our country. A lot of people who are like they're always talking about the latest crisis. They're always talking about how things are falling apart. But it's like, does it ever really happen? And yeah, so and I you, think that you, people are skeptical you, of that. You've even got like the Nat Geo shows, like the seven ways that the world will end and let's spend 60 minutes on each one, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's just not the type of stuff I like to watch. That You like to watch that type of stuff because I don't want to, pr- I would rather think, and on a subconscious level, it's been easy for me to think, you know what, the scientists or experts in whatever field it is, they have to be alarmist in order to be heard. You've got you've to be your own hype, man, if you want anybody to listen to you. And it was, it was a convenient position subconsciously for me to, to, to settle into. But I will say, t- turning on the news and experiencing the breaking news for the first time because I was out of that world, I woke up. Like, I mean, I was texting you that night. I was like, what What does this mean for our friends, our families, for our company? And in terms of action we need to take, you were already talking about that. Um, so I felt like I kind of got on board. So, and then there's people who are, st- you know, it. everyone, it, it's had to sink in for everyone in their own time. And that's the difficulty because in the meantime, this virus is moving around. Um but I think I did get on board, and I think you were like, what, was there any part of you that, that was like, I, I'll call it a morbid excitement? Like, yes, this is, I mean, I, I don't want to frame you here. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a nasty question. <laughs> well, I think that, um, I do think 
Actually, I think it's uh, it's helpful sometimes because I mean I'll talk in a second about like what I'm actually fearful of and like what I'm anxious about, like how that how mm. I've been dealing with that personally. Um, but to me, I find it helpful like when I'm going through something that would otherwise be fear inducing yeah. to kind of yeah. think about um, to think about being in the midst of a story that has a happy ending, right? Uh, to think about what role you're playing in um, this larger adventure of humanity kind of coming together and overcoming this thing. So there is, a, there is, and, and I don't want to talk about it now because I think there's a whole other podcast and talking about why this is, this could ultimately be good for humanity, you know, like experiencing a crisis like this. And we could talk about all the things that might change and for the better. But um, I know you've been watching Lord of the Rings as well, right? I, That's um, right, yeah. So as a family, you know, we, everybody in the family has already seen the movies, but it's been a while. And uh, so far we've just watched Fellowship of the Ring and the Two Towers. We haven't watched The Return of the King yet. But you, you had to be thinking the same thing that I was thinking. Multiple yeah. times during um, the, in, in this, I, this could be my wreck, but I have another wreck, but I'll make a, a mid-podcast wreck of watching the Lord of the Rings because first of all, like you said, you remember how much better it is than the Hobbit, right? Like the Hobbit was, an, it was, right. was a great book, but the translation to three movies, it just didn't, the Lord of the Rings is just, it's some of the, one, it's, it's, it's my favorite trilogy, okay? That I'm on, this is my favorite trilogy. And I, I, when I was watching, I was like, "This is better than Star Wars." I like told, and Ooh. Lily still wanted to I, fight I, me. I, you know, I've always thought that. I've always. I know you've always thought that, but like, I had forgotten. It was nice to get back into it. Like, I don't. But yeah, I, it was. I don't. To, I don't weep while watching Star Wars. Like, I like. There's so many moments of just pure joy and sadness, and I. Anyway, yeah. But there's these things that Frodo and Sam, especially, and Gandalf, they kind of say to each other that are these epic, uh, inspirational phrases. There's these conversations that they have where they start realizing, in fact, is it at the end of The Fellowship of the Ring or is it uh, Two Towers where, I think it's in Two Towers where Sam starts talking about, they're gonna tell, are they going to tell stories about us? You know, I think I think that might be the end of the f first movie. Yeah, but it's like, are we gonna be the heroes in the story? And I'm not. And so, right, I, I like to think about situations like this. Not like, how am I gonna be a hero? But like, how are we as a species going to overcome this? And like, what's the story that we're gonna tell? And I hope the story that we tell isn't that we started not trusting one another and we just were completely polarized. Like, this is an opportunity to come together. Uh, again, I do think it requires people to actually uh, sort of digest what the real threat is. And I think that yeah, even by the time this podcast comes out, that many more people will be like, oh, okay, this, oh, this is serious. Um, but yeah, I, so I do think there's a I, part I of me that feels like- gleaning lots of hope from watching the movies. It's yeah. like the hope that drove- Sam and Frodo on their journey and that drove everyone else to do whatever they could even when they couldn't help Frodo directly anymore they could help out their friends they could they could help out those that were that they were with yeah and and or they could say so, okay we can't go after them but we can go after Merry and Pippin you know yeah. it was i and it it hit me at such a at a point where I really needed it to just, I don't think I've ever gleaned so much hope from watching a movie that applied directly to, it, it just kind of fueled my, my ability to yeah, and to get I up think, the next day I, and, and I think that's be good. positive. It's good for us, you know? It's like, yeah, it's like that's the kind of stuff that, those are the kind of challenges that we need to face, that we need to come together and face. Um, I mean, specifically the way that I've kind of been responding to it in terms of how this um the virus kind of taps into my hypochondria okay has been interesting so even though you know i know from a statistical standpoint the the majority of people who get it won't even know they have it um 
And then on top of that, a larger majority of people who get it will not require hospitalization, you know, and then within our age group with no underlying health conditions, again, statistically, we're probably going to be okay, even if we could track this thing, right? Um, but you hear those stories, right? Like, I think a lot of the stories that we're hearing, and, and I think that um, these are getting more attention because they're surprising. It's like, oh, 31-year-old Olympic gold medalist swimmer just, you know, dealt with this for two weeks and is still, is, is still feeling the effects. Or a uh, 34-year-old dude in, in L.A. dies, from, Mm -hmm. from COVID-19. Um, so there's a part of me that, I mean, of course I'm thinking about my parents who are, who are in the higher risk group, your parents, you know, we're, we know a lot of people who are in higher risk groups. And so both of my grandmothers. Yeah. You still got grandparents who are alive in their nineties. Um, so thinking about them, but then I start thinking, Oh, I got, do I have a dry cough? You know, <laughs> it's, I'll, I'll start thinking, do, I, do my lungs feel funny? Like that's how my hypochondria kind of manifests itself. And I start uh-huh. thinking that, have I, have, I, have I contracted this? Oh, what, am I going to be one of the statistics? So I, I kind of get on a little bit of a fear loop. Spiral, spiral. Uh, doing that. And then, uh, and it hasn't helped that I've also, I think, now, I already knew I was slightly allergic to dogs. Like when I got my allergy, allergy test a couple of years ago, the only thing that came up was a slight allergy to dogs and cats, but it was like a two out of five or something. Well, COVID-19 does not give you an allergic reaction to dogs. Right. But because I'm now at home with Barbara a lot, spending a lot oh, yeah. of time with Barbara, it's like I've had this drainage and like sore throat that's been going on like two weeks now. And I'm reasonably certain it's just that it's COVID nineteen. That it's that's what I thought, even though those are not really symptoms of COVID nineteen for most people. So up until like yesterday when it hit me, I was like, "Oh, this might be because me and Barbara are having so much quality time," which I've really enjoyed all my quality time with Barbara. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I might have to get a better allergy medication. Uh, but anyway, so the you could, sh- you could shave her bald. I thought you were going to say something else, and I was going to say she's a female dog. Um, uh, bald. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, is but, it, you know where the you know where the where the allergens come from. They come from the scrotum the of the scrotum. dog, the but hair my, on the scrotum. But my wife has the exact opposite issue, and she thinks that she's going to give it to someone, right? Okay. So I'm worried about getting it. She's worrying about giving it. So. But that you should know, make you feel better, right? That she's not going to give it to you. Well, I don't think she's worried she, about. Is giving she wearing it to a me. mask everywhere? No, no. Okay, but as you know, um, I do have masks because that was one of the things that I had already bought many years ago. Uh, but uh, I don't have many. I have like a couple of packages of them. But we actually, uh, because we, you know, if, if you, you don't need them unless you're sick, technically. We were going to have just a couple for ourselves. So it's, you know, if you have an N95 mask, it can offer some protection if you, if it's sealed correctly, which is pretty hard to do with a beard like this. Uh, Like if you're going to go into a grocery store and you want to be extra safe, it's not going to hurt to wear a mask. But, you know, Jesse's like, hey, we need to take these masks to the hospital. So she's like already talking to uh, this person on Twitter who, this is like three, four days ago. And again, this is yeah. two weeks out from when you're going to see this episode. But in Santa Monica, there were there was an ER doctor who was already saying, we're running out of masks. I will drive anywhere in L.A. to pick them up. I don't care how many you have. And so she was like talking to this person on uh, Twitter. But at the time, she kind of had a sore throat. And she was like, I just want to let you know, full disclosure, I have a sore throat. And the woman was like, okay, wait 14 days. Anyway, we're going to probably give our masks to to a hospital, as you should if you have some, if you were one of the people that, like me, had had some ahead of time. I think for me, it's, you know, I just, I don't obsess about if I have it or not. I feel like that for, 
for over a week now already, we've been we've been isolated. We've been very strict about it. So I'm I'm with every day I'm gaining more confidence that we're not carrying it, and that we're being at, we're doing everything in our power to be to protect ourselves and other people at the same time. Um, so for me, it's it's more about channeling my energies into a routine, r- really routine. The things that I know I, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to fill my day with things. I'm going to I'm going to occupy myself. And I mean, what, what as we've been developing what our work plan is, that that certainly helped. But before we really got on top of that, there were a few days there where it was just like a lot of cleaning. Mm-hmm. You know, yesterday I went in. I always go into my shower, and as I said, in the you're not showering properly. GMM episode or whatever it's titled. We changed the title so much. Um, I will clean the drain of the shower because there's so much freaking hair that gets in there. I don't know how my wife has any on her head anymore, honestly. It, my, dra- my shower won't drain unless I, clean the, unless I clean the hair out of it. And yep. I'm blaming it all on her because she's not currently here. Her and, her and Lily just walked out to take a walk or something. But the way my shower works, it's like this fancy, long, heavy strip of tile that's like a, it's like a, a one inch tall, two inch wide, um, four inch deep, like slab that you have to pull out. And the, because the, it looks, it looks fancier, right? You can't see the drain and then the water drains all in it. And when you pull out this big freaking rectangular slab, um, there's a, there's one little drain at the end, just one silver dollar drain with like a thing on it. But that whole trough is plastic, and it fills up with like soap gunk. And so here I am, for the first time ever, not just cleaning the hair out of the drain, but I'm getting down on all fours, and I'm spraying stuff down. I'm grabbing a hand towel, and I'm cleaning out the trough of this thing. It felt good. It didn't feel necessary, but it felt very good. And I, even though I totally destroyed my hand towel with bleach, it's like a pink mosaic now. That's nice. Yeah, Not really, been, it's pretty ugly. We, we've been doing uh, a lot of cleaning and um, getting to yeah, getting to things that just over time they like the area next to my bed, like my bedside table, and then like. I had like stacked books and electronic equipment and stuff, and then just slowly. And my wife calls it like my corner. Yeah, and she's like, "When are you going to clean?" You have corner? one at the office too. And I'm like, uh, I'm, "Well, I'm, when I have time, is it's not, not mm-hmm. important. It's not important to clean the corner. Well, the corner is cleaned. The corner is very clean right now. I mean, you could sit uh, in my take corner a before and want. after photo. No, I don't do that kind of thing. I don't need. I don't you need, need to, to congratulate do- myself with pictures." <laughs> Uh, you know what? I'm not going to take that because it's your loss that you don't want to stop and celebrate your own accomplishments. I don't want to become addicted to it. Um, well, that of course that doesn't happen. Who's ad- who's addicted to cleaning yeah, an organization? Exactly. Who who, well, who finds themselves trapped by their own processes? Right. No one. But the, the thing that the thing that I, I I've been thinking, you know, so we have been. Um, you know, from a both personal and professional standpoint, this has been um, this is shaking things up, changed things around, right? So, I mean, completely, really. My heart goes out to the many people whose businesses, right, just completely stopped because of this. You know, and I and I understand that that's that's one of the big national debates happening right now. It's like, okay, well. Uh, and we can talk a little bit more about this maybe in a subsequent podcast about like the you know weighing the value of the economy versus the number of deaths, which to me seems like sort of a weird thing to to weigh. But I understand that like a complete depression, uh, economic depression, will harm people and make people. It will lead to ultimately more death in some way. So it, it, it is a factor, and I'm sensitive to the people who who you know. They don't have any way to make any money right now. We're in a position where yeah. we can still bring content to people, even if it's slightly altered like this. But assuming that 
the ad market is still going to be somewhat is going to exist on some level. You know, we still are in a, a service business that we're offering a service that we think is helpful at this time. And so we're committed to doing it. But thankfully, we're in a position where we can do that and we can keep our employees employed and that kind of thing. And not everybody's in that position. So we recognize that we're in a privileged position to do that. But that that yeah. is our mentality. Yeah, I think, you know, the conversations we've been having are, I think that the word opportunity comes up a lot. I think, and, and when we talk to our team, we're trying to c- convey that to them as well, that, we, you know, let, let's look at, let's be as smart as we can. Let's be as safe as we can. Let's, and then within that context, let's look at the things that we can actually do, the things that we have control over, and let's look for as many opportunities that this extremely challenging and scary situation grants us um, because we can still make videos. It's an opportunity for us to do that. It's an, you know, I think the main opportunities are not to capitalize on anything. I mean opportunity in the sense of service, an opportunity to serve um, our immediate families because we're spending so much time together, our, uh, our friends and loved ones via phone calls and chats, our serving our mythical team, some of which we can give work to. Others are, don't have as much to do from home because of the nature of what they were doing at Mythical. Um, it, they, there's just little for them to do at home, but giving them an assurance that, hey, we're going to keep putting out content in the most creative way we can in order to continue to support um, all of all of our team and to, to keep them on the payroll just to just to be blunt about it um, but also to create content as a way to an opportunity to serve all the mythical beasts to serve you um, because I mean we're, we're continuously blown away with the opportunity we have to make things that that connect with you we talk about we come back to it a lot on this podcast that like it's an amazing privilege to be able to create something that's a source of light in your life and when we're when we all everybody on earth is experiencing some level of shadow being cast by this virus over their lives some of them it feels like a complete eclipse and if they're a mythical beast we and we can give them 15 minutes 25 minutes with Good Mythical More every single weekday, if we can give them a vlog, if we can give them these conversations, it's like it's a, it's a privilege to be able to do that. And it's exciting to know that we can do it. You know, it's, it's very engaging for me to say, you know what, I can make this not just for, it's not for, not, it's not about the business, it's not about the money, except in supporting our, our, our team in our families. Well, we, and we've talked about this But it's before. about supporting the, the mythical beast. Too. Yeah, you know, you know, one of the things that we have uh, just realized over the years is that, um, you know, we never set out to do anything except create, right? We never, we were, even years ago, we just were like, okay, we're just going to make videos. Oh, there's an audience here. Uh, and then people started talking about the effect that the regular content coming into their homes had on them, people, helping people get through things. And again, we were, I think for many years, I, I always felt really self-conscious and kind of uneasy about that because I was like, well, that's not what we're, that's not what we're trying to, that's not what we're trying to do. We're just tr- trying to make you laugh. But eventually I kind of just accepted the reality yeah. that making people laugh is this therapeutic it's good it's like I, you got to embrace that that this is helpful and i think that in a moment like this when you can't do anything except and consume content for some people you're in a situation where it's like okay well i can clean i can work out i can take a hike i can make myself food but really a lot of us are just consuming content reading books listening to podcasts right. watching internet videos watching movies and uh, those are 
Yeah, it's an opportunity, and it's a, it's an opportunity that we take very seriously. So it's you know we're we're completely committed, just like Link said, we're completely committed to continuing to bring you uh, the content that we have always brought you. It's going to look a little bit different, of course, and we'll be talking about how that's going to affect GMM and some other things. And hopefully, this is not too long of a period of time, and we'll get back to a somewhat normal schedule soon. But our intention is that we recognize that this is something that people kind of count on, especially during this time. And we want to, not just for the sake of our business and our company kind of remaining buoyant, but also to, to serve you guys. I mean, the, the kind of the additional thing that I've been thinking is, again, and I'm trying to evaluate whether or not, like what part of this comes from a healthy place and what part comes from my sort of, my own personal struggles with being so performance based, kind of having that mindset of always wanting to do, 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 and finding my self worth in what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen this virus. I mean, a lot of people are taking advantage of this time to to not only do things for people, but to do things that are super cool and get them noticed, right? And sometimes I start thinking like, okay, all right, yeah, we've got GMM, that's great, but we've always had that. We've got your biscuits, that's great, but we've always had that. You know, we've got the Mythical Kitchen stuff that we recently added to the mix and all this stuff. But I start feeling this pressure to be like, but what else could we do, you know? Um, and, I, and I think that some of that could be, and I also feel it from a personal standpoint, which is like, oh, you've got all this time on your hands. Well, you know what? You should like really figure yourself out. <laughs> you know, you this is an opportunity to really accelerate those th that work you've been doing in therapy, and you need to uh, like this is when you need to really sit down and figure out what your values are and your goals and all this stuff and th the things that you keep putting off, kind of like getting your mind straight about this stuff. And so yeah. I, I felt this sort of intense pressure. I've actually been overwhelmed by it a couple of times, and and I've had and I've felt myself like waking up in the middle of the night thinking about what am I going to do? What are we going to do? Uh -huh. um, what are we going to do to take advantage of this? Not in a like slimy, like get more attention kind of way, but it's just like, you know, being in this sort of desperate, desperate times, but being in a position where we can bring people stuff, feeling this pressure to be like, and what else could we do? And what else could I do for my, you know, to deal with myself and all the problems <laughs> that I have? Yeah, I mean, for me, until like recording this podcast is a relief for me because I now know that we're wrapping up and we actually got one in the can and we're able to do it. I mean, we're go we're going to record a the first good mythical morning split screen ever in a few hours. Uh, I I feel much better, but yesterday I was completely overwhelmed setting up all the technical aspects and I just I felt very buried, so I I didn't have the margin to think that much about those things, but I definitely understand. I, I think the, um, I wanted to read a quote from an article that I think speaks directly to this and also hopefully can serve as encouragement to, um, to you listening to, um, I was reading a, a Washington Post article, which came across Twitter. And in that article, which I'm sorry, I can't remember what it's called, but, um, is a rabbi, Rabbi Yosef, um, was quoted from his Facebook page where he had written to his L.A. congregation, but then it was put in the Washington Post article and had, had an impact on me in terms of my mindset. <clears throat> he said, Every hand that we don't shake must become a phone call that we place. Every embrace that we avoid must become a verbal expression of warmth and concern. Every inch and every foot that we physically place between ourselves and another must become a thought as to how we might help that other should the needs or need arise. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that this morning, you know, I was in, a, in an effort to keep my routine going and to start my day with some sanity you know, I've been trying to do my workouts in the garage. And this morning I was, 
I was halfway through it, and this golden retriever just runs up into my garage. And then it ran back. I petted the golden retriever. It ran back out. And then this, this woman who's a neighbor that I see but never talk to is walking by. And I take the earbud out, and we had a conversation. You know, it, and it was a, from 10 how feet are away. you doing? For, yeah, from, from 10 feet away. And I was like, oh, my, maybe I shouldn't have touched her dog. I'd only petted once, but I'm not going to sit here and like, love up on the dog. But we had a, we had, there was, a, it, it was a friendly conversation. It was short, but there was an undertone of care that I gave and received that was extremely powerful that I never, and it was, it was simple. It was, this is, this is so surreal, isn't it? Do you have everything you need? It's actually a beautiful morning. And then that was it, you know? But there was a connection that otherwise would never have been made. And I drew strength from giving that care and also receiving it. And I think it's, it doesn't have to be the big things. It can be, this, it can be those small interactions, you know? It can be, you know, I think about all the opportunities that I have within my own home with my family. The amount of time that we're spending together is utterly unprecedented, you know, and there's a lot of pitfalls associated with that. I'm sure we'll get into all that later. Uh, We need to wrap up for the sake of uploading this huge freaking file, but I just wanted to leave it at that quote. Yeah, I think, you know, we're going to see, I think we are seeing, we're seeing the best and the worst in people right now. You know, there are people who are thinking about themselves, um, people hoarding, you know, people buying up things, people price gouging. But I think that the the majority of people are thinking about their fellow person and um I think I have hope. I have hope that in the end that this is this is going to bring us together even though we are especially in this country divided even, again, like I said, even even about our perspective on a virus which the virus has no political affiliation. You know, the, the virus doesn't care about whether you're in a red state or a blue state, but still, for some reason, we just, we're so polarized in this country that we filter everything through that. We can't hear a piece of news without filtering it through the source. Um, but I think that this is, it's an unpre- unprecedented situation, but it's an unprecedented opportunity to, Think about what you can do for your fellow human. I would say love to love yourself and to love others. Yeah. Um, okay. I think this went. I think this went okay. I think it went well. I th- you got a wreck though. Yeah, I do. Um, now I've been telling you about this. You haven't responded to me about this uh, yet. Uh, oh, I know what you're gonna say. Now, first of all, I will say you do need to watch Lord uh, uh, Lord of the Rings. Do that. But that's clear. You got to watch Tiger King on Netflix. Everyone's been talking about this. You've probably, many of you have probably already watched it. You've heard about people talking about it. Um, And it's not for everybody. Let me just say that. It's not for everybody. It's a a documentary. It's a docu-series about a, not just, uh, one guy, the Tiger King, is just a dude who like raises tigers, you know, and like a sketchy situation, like the whole like, home zoo and exotic animals and that kind of thing but it's the world it's the world of that guy and then other people like him but it's also kind of a murder mystery and so it and it's all real i watched the first episode last night because you told me to watch it and i was laughing out loud it's the first episode real fresh to me amazing and well i love there the were sec- some hilarious edits. Once you, getting to know him as a character, and then it takes the, it takes some turns, and it's like it's serious. Oh well, but it I've wait, never laughed so you hard. You wait for episode two. Episode two, like everything that you thought, like they're, like they go a level deeper, and you're like, no, 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 that can't be. They true. keep peeling. It's like an onion. They keep peeling the back onion, layers. I'm like, the what? onion goes down like four more layers on episode two. You you gotta watch it, Tiger you King. You gotta watch it on Netflix. I, it it's for me the thing that I I was thinking when I was watching it is I was like, man, we need to find a story like this. Like it was just inspirational for well, me to think about 
I, it, I'll, was, it was like over decades. Yeah, I, don't I know. know if that, I don't know if he was just utilizing the footage because the guy had a cameraman following forever, and then somebody came in and like. Anyway, they, get, they get into it a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Right. If you can't tell, uh, I agree with the wreck. Okay, so we're going to be doing this for the foreseeable future from our homes. And uh, let us know what you thought about this conversation and uh, how you're dealing with all this. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. We'll be Hashtag talking Ear about Biscuits. It. We'll be speaking at you next week. Love you. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.